In this video of the series, we are going to do some example problems on finding the discriminant and solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. So we're asking this to find the solutions by using the quadratic formula and the value of the discriminant to describe the roots. And so here's how I approach these problems. Is if I'm ever going to use the quadratic formula, I know the discriminant is a part of it. So what I do first is I always find the discriminant first. So if I have x squared minus 8x equals 16, just like when we had the quadratic formula, we're going to set it equal to 0. So I would subtract 16. We would then identify our a, our b, and our c values. And I would go find my discriminant first. The reason why is it allows me to know what my answers should look like before I find them. So b squared is negative 8 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 16. So negative 8 squared is a positive 64. Negative 4 times 1 times negative 16 is a positive 64. So my discriminant, the value of my discriminant is 100. 28. That is positive. The discriminant is greater than zero. It's a positive number. Therefore, that means I am going to have two real solutions. And so there's the first part. Find the value of the discriminant is 128. Describe what the answers are. It is going to be two real solutions, two real roots. Then you go right to the quadratic formula. X equals negative B. Now here's the cool part. Now when you do you know, negative of negative 8 plus or minus the square root, like I said, here's the cool part. Now you, you don't have to do B squared minus 4AC. You don't have to do negative 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 16. And the reason why is this is your discriminant. And you already found that value. And so you can just plug in right away 128. Now that's nice because then you don't have a lot of numbers and parentheses inside the radical. It's neater. It's cleaner. And so you now will go over 2a. So negative and negative simplify is a positive. You know, 2 times 1 to the bottom is 2. And I'm going to have to simplify my radical. So I have the square root of 128. You know, that's even. So I'm going to take out a 2. I'm left with 64. You know, 64 is 8 times 8. Now, before you've always been told, oh, do prime factorization, look for pairs of prime numbers, put them together, and you can simplify a radical. Now, there's a shortcut. You don't have to just look for pairs of prime numbers. You just look for pairs of actual numbers because, really, this means you have two 8s being multiplied inside of the radical. And so, you know, that's really 8 squared and square rooting 8 squared. And they cancel each other out. The square and the square root, you're just left with 8. And so since I have a pair of 8s, though they're not prime, you can still take it out. It doesn't matter if they're prime or not. If you have a pair of the same number, you can just take it out. So you're left with 8 squared to 2. And so that is what my simplified radical is. And now we simplify further. You know, I would divide both numbers by 2. And I get x equals 4 plus or minus 4 radical 2. And that's your answer. So you notice if you do the discriminant first, it kind of, I'd say, organizes your work. You don't have to plug everything in the radical and doesn't look as sloppy. There's less of a chance of making a mistake because just squaring a number and subtracting 4ac, mathematically, there's not a lot of chances of errors. And you just plug that right into the formula and you simplify from there. So let's take a look at example number two. You have 5x squared plus 42 equals 0. So I'm going to jump right to it is equal to 0, identifying my a, b, and c. a is the coefficient of your quadratic term, so it's 5. You know, c is the constant, so it's 42. 
is the coefficient for the linear term, the one with just an x. And there's no linear term there, so we use 0. And then I jump right to the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. So I get 0 for my b squared minus 4 times a, which is 5, and c, which is 42. So that gives me 0 minus 840 which is a negative 840. So that is the value of my discriminant. Now, if I were to compare that to zero, it is less than zero, it's negative, which means I'm going to have two imaginary solutions, two imaginary roots. And so there's the first part. I have the value of my discriminant. I describe what that means with my roots, so now I go to my quadratic formula. x equals negative b. Please, please do not put negative 0. 0 is neither negative nor positive. It is just 0. So negative 0, it, it's just 0. So you get 0 plus or minus the square root of your discriminant. So that is negative 840 all over twice a, which is 2 times 5. So you would take the negative out, you know, 0 plus or minus, and you're just going to have the plus or minus. And you would take the negative out and turn it into an i. And now you have i squared of 40 over 10. So we have to simplify the square root of 840. So I can keep going down. I have, let's see, 2 goes in there 420 times. 2 goes into there 210 times. You know, 210 is going to be 21 and 10. 21 is 2 and 5. Sorry, 10 is 2 and 5. 21 is 3 and 7. So I'm going to look for my pairs. So I have one pair of twos on the ends, and then a three, a seven, two, and a five. So there's no more pairs left. So 840, if you take the square root of it, simplifies into two with three times seven times two times five, which is 210 still remaining. So if I take that, I get x equals plus or minus. 2i square root of 210 over 10. We can still simplify. You treat the 2 like a coefficient here. So if you have 2 tenths, you really have 1 fifth. And so I have x equals plus or minus 1i, which is just i, square root of 210 over 5. You see I have two imaginary answers. One positive i square root of 10 over 5, and one negative i square root of 10 over 5. All right, last example dealing with our discriminant and quadratic formula. 2x squared minus 9x plus 8 equals 0. It's already equal to 0. So let's identify a, b, and c. a is 2. b is negative 9. c is positive 8. Jump right to the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. So you get negative 9 squared minus 4 times 2 times 8. That's going to give you 81 minus 64, which is 17. Compare that to 0. 17 is greater than 0. It's positive, so you're going to have two real solutions, two real roots. That describes the discriminant. And then we jump to our quadratic formula. x equals negative b, so negative of negative 9, plus or minus the square root of your discriminant, which is 17, over twice a, so 2 times 2. So negative and negative is a positive, so you get 9 plus or minus square root of 17. 2 times 2 is 4. If you think about it, you can't simplify the square root of 17. Yeah, 17 is a prime number. You can't break it down anymore. And so that is your answer. 9 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 4. And so you see 
that the process for solving, we can find our discriminant every time and then just use that to plug in the quadratic formula to kind of organize our work a little bit easier to identify what our solutions are to real roots. And I would have two real roots for my answer before we go in there. And so I hope you found this video informing on how the discriminant relates to the quadratic formula and how it can be used to assist in finding the solutions.